let's go ahead and get into Tramway's dystopian expansions. So first off, what is it you guys are looking at? So we have the expansion board over here as well as some other oddball things. But for the most part, this is kind of what you're going to be looking at on the board. So we have the actual map spaces out here. Within the map spaces, you have various types of spaces that are already pre-printed on the board. You have industrial spaces, you have residential locations, you have commercial locations, and then eventually there will become leisure or I'm probably going to call them luxury locations, but the red locations. Mars, unfortunately, does not start with any on it, so therefore there are none printed on the board. Each of the locations out here is a place to be able to build tramways or lay track between locations with the ultimate goal being to deliver passengers from locations to various locations where they want to go to gain money as well as to get victory points. So we have parcel locations. These are the numbered slash lettered locations out here on the board. So various letter alphanumeric locations out here on the board, which are going to correspond to alphanumeric uh, parcels that are out here in cards that we may be able to acquire as the game goes along. There are passengers that are going to appear in the various locations as well. That pretty much lays out what we're looking at on the main board. Then over here on the auction board is, well, the auction board. So everybody is going to be auctioning various amounts of money throughout the game to uh, haggle over uh, turn order here. We have the turn order track there, along with buildings that are going to refill out here with new passengers. We have the auction deck and the auction display. A victory point track goes round the outside, round the outside, round the outside. Then whenever we build buildings, we have various, uh, not decks, but stacks of cards with the various building locations on them. And then we have packets in which we're another way to be able to acquire other cards as the game goes along. And finally, we have passengers, as you guys can see there. Now, within our own tableaus, you have a very small little tableau that has a, a number of different pieces of information. How much stress? This is a stress track, and these are going to be negative victory points at the end of the game. Then on the left-hand side, side, it shows your hand limit size. It starts out with seven, can grow to either eight or nine, potentially. Our deck of cards, as such, will be face down here. Our pool or our discards will be over here. And then everybody starts with two workers or two rail workers. Important to note, you will never acquire more than two rail workers. So these are the only two. As you spend them, you may be able to get them back as the game goes along, etc., etc. You have ownership markers there. We're play not playing with the tiddlywinks or the Mar uh, Martin Wallace money that comes with the game. We are playing with poker chips. And then there are two different types of track in which players may be able to build. Straight track or 90 degree curve track. There is a basic side, which is just the player color side, and then there is the upgraded side with the white stripe on it. Then everyone has some amount of, or various cards in which they start the game. Everybody starts the game with the same two identical cards in their hand. Then randomly, we were dealt out pa uh, parcel locations cards. So as it just so happened, I got the D1 and D2 parcels, which correspond to the D1 and D2 locations out here on the board. In addition to all of that, we have a handy dandy little player aid that shows the turn order and how things go on that. And then on the reverse, you have whenever you deliver passengers, the bonus building stuff on that. So that is pretty much all of the components that you guys are going to see tonight with some little expansion or uh, eyeball things for the expansion. But again, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. So let's go over how to play tramways. First off, the game takes place over six rounds with the first five rounds being identical and then a little bit different with the sixth round. There are three phases per round. There is an auction for turn order and then a choice of card to add to your deck. So we're going to be fighting over turn order. Then we're going to add those one of those cards to our decks. Then after that, 
we're going to have the meat of the game or the action phase where we're actually going to be doing stuff out here on the board. And finally, administration, which is a get extra stuff in a cleanup phase as well. So the auction. In current turn order, players take turns bidding immediately or a pay, bidding and immediately paying for their bid, cash or cards from their hand with money or pass. So what does this mean? Well, as it just so happens, we randomly selected this. And if Christopher is going to start out, he can pay with any mix of cash on hand and any mix of cards in hand as cash discarding them down to his pool to be able to place his bid. So if he so desires, maybe he starts out with a bid of $3, whatever. Then it comes over to Jess. Jess can bid any amount that she wants, except what she has previously bid, which in this case she has not, or what any player to the left of her has already bid this round. So for instance, she cannot bid $3, but she says, you know what, none of these cards are terribly bad, but I do want to stay into the, uh, into the auction, so I'll bid a dollar. It comes to me, and I look, and I say, you know what, I'm just going to pass. I choose not to engage in this. So if I pass, immediately go to the last available slot on here. Brown, however, Ariel could, the only things that he can bid at this point now are $2, $4 or higher, and you are not capped at $10, you can go higher. So Ariel says, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and bid 5 bucks because there's a card over here that I really want. So then we reset and start again, and by reset I mean we look and see, is any player, the active player, meaning pink in this case, the single highest bidder by themselves? Well the answer is no because Ariel's outbid him already. So now he cannot bid three because he can't bid what you previously bid and can't bid anything to the left. Well, there's nobody to the left. So he can bid one, two, four, six or higher. And he says, you know what? I don't mind going third. There's a couple cards out here. I'll take the risk. So he just passes. Jess now says, okay, what do I want to do? Can't bid one, can't, can bid as high as five and says, you know what? I'm going to go crazy and bid five bucks comes back to Ariel. He's like, really? <laughs> okay. Well, that stinks, but I'm going to go ahead and pass. We come back now to Jess. Is she the single highest bid? She is. So she takes the highest available space. Boom. And we would continue doing this until all the slots have been filled. The privilege of winning the auction in this case is, hey, that was stressful. So Jess immediately would peg one stress on her stress boards, meaning she would move up one space like so. In addition to that though, the true privilege is she is going to be the first player until this point in the next round and she gets first choice of any of the available auction cards. These cards immediately go into your hand, unlike traditional deck builders where they go into your discard, these go directly into your hand. As soon as all four cards are chosen, we then immediately refill the cards. We're probably going to forget that nine out of 10 times. So please peanut gallery, help us out. All right, so that is the auction. Any questions on the auction? Nope. nope. All right, now we move on to the meat of the game, which are the actions. The actions come in two different sets. The first one in whatever the existing turn order is, the active player takes one action on their turn. One action, one action, one action. We come back to the beginning take two actions, two, 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 end of the round. Well, what are the available actions, you might be wondering? Well, there are four possible actions that you can take during your turn. What they are is build or upgrade rails. Those are two individual options, but there you go. You can build or upgrade buildings. You can move one passenger for money and prizes i.e. victory points or happiness points, or do nothing and take $2. I want to point out the take $2 now. I told you that the first time through, you take one action. You can take two bucks on that if you want. And regardless of what you did on the first time, the second set of actions where you take two actions, you can only take the $2 once within that, regardless of whether you took it in the first action, meaning in the second set, you can take two bucks and do something, or you can do something and take two bucks. You can't take two dollars 
for both of the uh, double action on the second time through. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, so let's go through what it is we're going to be doing. So starting off with building or upgrading rails. So we're gonna start off with building rails. So what are the prerequisites for building rails? Well, out here, and again, we're talking about the basic game, not the expansion right now. You're going to build one link. A link is between a parcel. A parcel is an undeveloped, think of it as an empty lot that you own, However, you haven't developed it yet, meaning you haven't put one of the available buildings out on that space. You can build from one of your parcels, kind of like what I've shown here, to a different location. So I could build over here for three track, okay? Or I could build from one already built location, like this industrial space here, to another already built location, so I could come down around like so to that location. That is the basic idea. But there are rules, as you might expect, to be able to build. To be able to build, you need a number of things. So let's go ahead and talk about the anatomy of a card before we go any further. There are a total of five different action spaces or five different abilities that a card can grant a player in a given action, okay? There is one space up here, two, three, four, and the magnetic strip on the right side being the fifth available space. One of which is laying track or building rail or yeah, building new rails on a link. They come in three different sizes, single rail, double rail, and triple rail as well. But as it is, if this were my selection of cards to begin with. I would actually have a, a couple more cards, but I digress. We only need three track to be able to, or we only need three track to be able to lay for what it is we're doing. So I would, from my hand, I would play both of these cards like so. Then I have to discard one of my rail workers, not because it's listed there, but because I'm building track. And then the last thing is if you complete a link, you must play a card that has an icon on it that for one of the two ends. Meaning I'm building and there is an industrial space on one of those two ends. So I'm laying three track to or from an industrial space. So again, talking about the base game, I could build something along the lines of one, two, and three, because I have built to or from an industrial space. At that point, this rail worker will be discarded. These three cards are then discarded into my pool, and that is my one action. That is an example of building track. Now, you can also, maybe I didn't want to play this card for whatever reason, and I wanted to build to a residential location, but it also has a rail symbol on it. So there are three rail, so again, going back to our example, I discard a rail worker, I have three rail, I must build exactly three rail, I cannot build less than, I cannot build more than. For each additional use of a card in a single action that you want to use, so a second icon that you're using on a card, that's going to cost you one stress. So if I chose to build three track using my rail worker to a residential space, that would then add one to my stress track because I use two symbols. If I use three symbols for whatever reason on a card, then at, for instance, if I did not have, so like so, I could use one, taking a stress for that, three, taking a stress for that with the rail worker. Does that make sense? Is that clear? All right. And maybe I wanted to save cards for whatever reason. And then to be able to build that track, to be able to build three, maybe I were to build out to or from this residential. Now, it's important to note, if you do not complete a link, meaning if I were to build something along the lines of one, two, three, that is an incomplete link. As long as I continue that link on the next turn, we're good to go. But because it's an incomplete link, what I actually didn't need to do is spend the extra stress and play an, an icon for a destination or for a starting location because 
it's not a, a link, a completed link, so I wouldn't have had to have used that. So it'd be one, two, three there in a rail worker, so I will have taken only one stress instead of two for using that. Whereas, had I used that, it just would have been one, two, three in the rail worker and no stress and no destination needed. Any questions on building rail? Nope. All right. So moving on from building rail, oh, one other thing that I should point out is building a link is between one location to one location. So for instance, if I wanted to build this and then continue it on to somewhere else or build a second one, you cannot do that in a single action. You can only do one link, meaning right there, and you can make it as obnoxious as you want, meaning the longer the link, you can do so. So you could bring it around here, wrap it around and have it come down because that's gonna be worth more money when we deliver for passengers. So that's building track. Upgrading track, to be able to do so, you need to be able to play the upgrade track icon. And let me find one. I wasn't gonna use the expansion card if at all possible, but that's fine. So to be able to upgrade track, you must use the upgrade symbol, which is this symbol right here with the three victory points on it. Then you must also play a destination icon to be able to do so. So in this case, if I'm going to upgrade, let me go ahead and set this up a little bit better. A moment. All right, so I played the upgrade icon. I played the destination, the place that I'm actually going to upgrade to or from. So in this case, right here from residential to in industrial, I'm upgrading that link. I then would flip all of these over to their white side, as you can see here, trying not to destroy the world as we go along. And that is upgrading a link. In addition to that, you're going to score three victory points. So anytime you see this hex symbol, you'll peg three points. So immediately peg three points on the board. That's easy enough. That's upgrading rails. Any questions on that? Mm -hmm. All right. So now let's talk about constructing a building, which is essentially what I just tried to do right there. So let's back up a little bit and I'll show you how to do this. So first off, you have to play the construct a building icon. That looks a lot like this. In addition to that, you have to play a destination icon. So the destination in this case is D1. So the parcel in which I wish to up or to build. And then I have to choose which of the four that I want to build. I could build a residential, a leisure, a commercial, or an industrial. And let's say I choose to build an industrial on D1. I place that there. I replace my ownership marker. It immediately comes with a one passenger on it. Then we're going to take one of the appropriate cards that shows the type of industry that we have built on it. And this card immediately comes into our hand. Anytime you acquire new cards, like I said earlier, they go into your hand. And because it's an industrial one, this is the only way that you can increase your hand size. So this little marker will go on top there. And now when we get to the end of the round, instead of increasing my hand with options of seven cards, I now increase it to eight cards. And finally, as you see, I built a building. I score one point here. All right, that's building a building. Any questions on that? Nope. All right. So upgrading a building you're gonna to have to take my word for it. It looks a lot like this actually, except it's got a little arrow on both sides and it says three victory points on it. To be able to play the upgrade building icon, you, you are, to upgrade, you play the upgrade building icon, you play a building type that you want to upgrade, meaning say this industrial space here. We then will flip that building If it did not have a passenger, it gets a passenger. If it had a passenger, it does not get a passenger. And then you peg three points as shown on it. And that's upgrading a building. It's that simple. It's a good way to replenish passengers onto locations and score a little bit of points as well. Okay? All right. All right. That's most of the things except now the meat, which is 
delivering passengers. This is how you're going to get the majority of your money and score the majority of your points. To be able to move a passenger now, and looking around the board, I will, oh, that's actually, that works out. Indulge me, let's say we had built at D3 instead. All right, so maybe on my turn, I wanna deliver a passenger to a residential. A passenger requires a magnetic strip and a destination, not a origination. So where do they want to go? They're going to a residential, I say. So therefore, I need to play an R for residential in addition to a magnetic strip. So I could do this and wherever my stress marker is, I would gain one stress because I'm using two symbols on the same card or maybe I played a second card for the magnetic strip and one for that. In that case, I would not get the stress. Then. You choose any passenger anywhere to go to a residential location. So maybe I choose, oh, I'm, I'm trying to set up for the expansion, I apologize. Like so, this passenger goes up and arrives at that residential location. At that point, you're going to get three different things as shown here. So on the player aid says, whenever you deliver a passenger, you get victory points, you get the bonus for the building in which you de uh, deliver to, and then you get paid. So the first thing is victory points. That's as simple as how many stops did I make? That was only one stop. If I had gone, say, one, two, three, four, all using my links, I will have scored four victory points. The player whose link you used scores the victory points for that individual link. So link by link, you're going to score points. This was only one link, so it's one point. So orange would peg one point. Then after that, we would get the bonus for whatever the building that we delivered to or provide you. If it's a residential, you go down one stress. Oh, nice, awesome. You cannot go higher or lower or lower or higher on your stress board here. If it were a industrial building, this is how you're going to be able to get your rail workers back onto your tableau. However, industrial, you're going to work. Going to work is stressful. You would gain one stress if you delivered to an industrial. If you deliver to a commercial, that's also going to work. So what does that mean? You're going to gain a stress. But in addition to that, you're going to gain $5 or an extra card from one of the packets. There are four packets available to players out here. At the beginning of the game, we're going to pillage a couple of those cards out of there. But as it is, you see one of the face-up cards, and then you see how many other cards are face down in the packet. You get to pick up the entire packet, look at all the remaining cards in that, choose one, place it immediately into your hand, and then play, replace the packet, placing any card that you want face up with the others face down for the other players. So now you have a little bit of extra information that the other players maybe do not have. Any questions on that? Nope. All right. The last building is a leisure or luxury. Um, so far I'm doing all right. A leisure building. This is by victory points. Important to note, you get the building uh, advantage before you get paid for taking your route meaning it's only going to be cash on hand. I only have three bucks. I could spend up to $3 and get two victory points immediately. Then after whatever the building is that you did, you then get paid for your route. If it were a normal route like this, how many tiles or how many pieces of track are there in my entire route? One, two, three. Okay, easy enough, I get paid three bucks. If it were on the upgraded side, it's one per track as well, so one, two, three, four, five, plus 50% rounded up. 50% of five is two and a half, rounded up is three, so half of that plus the five, that's eight total I would get paid. However, now let's go ahead and talk about a little bit of a different situation on delivering a passenger. Let's say I wanted to deliver a passenger to an industrial space like so. I choose to move this passenger here down and then down to this industrial space. That's 
totally within the rules I can do so. So, first thing is get victory points. Whose link did I use for that? Purple. Purple would gain one victory point. Then, when he arrived there, he used orange's link, so purple and orange each would gain one victory point. You guys okay? All yeah. right. Then, get the bonus of what the building is, so the industrial, I would get a rail worker back, get one stress. But now it comes to money. Whosever rail it is, and this happens very much in the order of travel. This is important to point out. Jess would get one, two, three, and half rounded up, total of five bucks. However, it comes from me because I'm the one that used her rail. So I owe Jess five bucks. If I have the five bucks, cool, I pay her, no harm, no foul. Then, after I pay her, then I get my money because I went in that direction. Had I traveled in the other direction, I would have gotten my money, then paid Jess. So what does that mean? Well, if I'm traveling this direction, I can use the money that I acquire from this to pay Jess for that. But going the other direction, I traveled on Jess's first, I have to pay her before I get that money. So what happens if you don't have the money? Well, it creates an awkward situation. Awkward situations are stressful. I gain one stress. Jess doesn't get paid because I don't have enough to pay her. But what does that mean? Well, I don't get paid for all that money either. But if I did have the money on hand, I would pay her and then I would get my eight bucks in addition to that. That's delivering passengers. Any questions? No. Nope. All right. The last thing now is the administration step. So at this point, any of these symbols that you have left in cards in hand. So for instance, let's say I had these two cards left in my hand at the end of a turn. I could discard the cards for whatever it shows of that and gain whatever it shows. So in this case, I would gain a rail worker. Well, I already have two, but if I didn't have two, I would gain an additional. Again, you're maxed at the two that you have there. If it shows a white symbol on this, this is place a passenger anywhere on the board, to any building on the board, I should say. Reduce one stress, easy enough. Gain whatever money is on the card. If I had those three cards, I could play this for a rail worker and play that for a total of three card or three dollars. These would then immediately go into my discard like so. And for whatever reason, if I had at the end, after all of that, I still had this card left in my hand, I can keep this card for the next round. Or I'm allowed to freely discard one card from my hand if I wish to, with no penalty, unless the card has a penalty on it. Any additional cards? One stress for each card that you wish to discard. So if I choose to discard this, okay. Then at the end of that, we're then going to replenish passengers on any of the buildings like so. So any of the residential buildings that do not have a passenger on it. So if this did not have a passenger on it, it would immediately get one passenger. Every residential on the board, then industrial. And these were just randomly placed out here. We then move that up. We discard this. And last but not least, you then draw up to your hand size from any remaining cards that may be in your deck. If you need to shuffle up and draw more, you then shuffle up your discards, da 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 da, -da it, like so. Draw up your hand. Rinse and repeat for five rounds. The sixth round is a little bit wonky. There's no cards out here. The winner of the auction gets double stress and no cards. However, the sixth round, instead of drawing from your deck, you get all of your cards and select up to your hand size with any cards that were remaining in your hand from the previous round remaining in your hand. But you get to freely choose the cards that are in your hand to do so. And that pretty much is tramways except for end game scoring. End game scoring, you're going to score three points for each completed link. So I would score three for that, I would score three for that. So six points for that. If there were any that were incomplete, I would, and it doesn't matter if they're upgraded or not, those don't count. But upgraded or not upgraded, they're still worth three points a piece. Uh, after that, it's one point for every $10 left in hand. Then, 
you lose points based on wherever you are on your stress track. So in this case, I would lose three points. One other thing that I didn't point out, at the end of the round, if you are ever up here, you lose one point at the end of the round. And if you would ever go past that, you would lose one point whenever you would ping up past that as well. So that is whoever has the most happiness points or victory points wins the game. If tied, most money is the tiebreaker. Any questions on the base game? All right, good. Let's move on now to the expansion. So I'm actually going to teach both expansions right now because honestly, the one we're playing gets all the rules from the moon and then a couple extras. So let's start out with the moon one. And I don't have any of the tiles, but you know what we can do? We'll just do this. The moon looks like so cratered, etc., etc. It has printed locations on it, etc., etc. But as it is, we're playing on the Mars side. The difference here, and this applies to both expansions, everything I'm about to talk about, both the moon and on Mars. Instead of drawing four cards, packet cards, you're drawing two generic cards and two parcel cards. Okay? So the generic cards are your two starter cards, your two starter cards being these and two parcel cards instead of four. Then everybody also has a new card, this one. So the nice thing about this new starter card is this is one icon. So you can build a rail to residential and you don't have to pay a stress for using both symbols on it. If you wanted to use this symbol and that or this and that, then it would be two symbols, but you get two in one. Pretty simple on that, right? Yep. Now, here comes the wonky part. If you are familiar with Age of Steam, the moon map, Alvin VR had also created that. Well, now you get to warp around the edge of the board. On the edge of the board are Roman numerals going from one to five on each side of the board, and they're ignoring the ones that actually are joined here. So as you can see, you can build and travel off the edge, this going off of space number three, I can come into any other three here, 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 there, there, or where I chose to and build. So to be able to build three track in this case, coming out from this parcel, one, two, three, into that location. To be able to build that, it would require me three rails, one rail worker, and either D2 as a destination or a commercial space to be able to build that. Easy enough, mm -hmm. yep. you think it is, but then the only other rule really that changes on this is moving a passenger. The reason you're gonna wanna go off board and indulge me, this is where I was talking about for earlier, if it were built something like this, if this passenger were to go all the way to this residential here, it would be off board three, coming on board here. One point for me, one point for Jess. That's pretty simple. I would then get the benefit of the location just like normal, so I would reduce one stress. But because I went off board, it doesn't matter if I went off board one locate, one step, or if I went off here, off there, came on off here, and finally delivered there you get to reduce one additional stress, regardless of the number of times you went off board. So in this case, there, I get to reduce two stress. So I go from there all the way down to there. Awesome, then I would get, have to pay, so I would get the three income for me, and then I would owe Jess her five bucks, just like normal. And then the passenger goes back into the supply. Any questions on just reducing your stress? One additional if you go off board. Nope. All right, then, at the end of the round, oh, I guess there is one other big deal. You guys see these black cubes? Albin actually sent us a little gray marker. Looks like a rail worker. This is the dark side of the moon, or also on Mars. So one of the tiles is going to have these black cubes on it. What does that mean? You cannot deliver to any cities that are currently in the dark. They're black cities, so they're blacked out. 
passengers can move from. You can build track on it the whole nine yards. You just cannot deliver to those cities. So our reminder on there, so we don't screw this up on the stream, are the black cubes. This will rotate every round clockwise. So from there to there, to there, to there, to there, to there. So these two locations will be black twice during the game for mm -hmm. us today. And that is how you play on the moon. Well, Mars has a couple of other little things here. The expansion cannot be played. Now, the moon can be played with five players. Mars, however, cannot be played with five players because the green player is reserved for the Martians. I'm sorry, Jess. I know you're a bit of an odd duck. Get it? Duck. But you're not a Martian. Mm -hmm. All right. So the Martians start. We place a Martian token on every city at the beginning of the game. Martians are dying out, so when we build new cities, uh, new buildings, they do not come with Martians. These six are the only Martians that will be available in the game. Same rules for building rail as on the moon. However, your first link must build, be built from one of your parcels that you own, and you can only have a single unified rail network, meaning you cannot start a link that is not connected to your existing network. Is that clear? Start at your own parcel and make it contiguous from there. Moving passengers, well, these Martians also, everything else is normal, but these are passengers. Martians, however, only want to go where there are other Martians. So I could, instead of choosing a regular passenger, choose to move a Martian. And thematically, I don't know why this happens, this next part, but to be able to move a Martian, it requires a rail worker. I like to think of that as food. They need something for their trip. So they actually will use up one of your rail workers which you may be able to acquire again later on by going to an industrial space, et cetera, et cetera. But they consume one of your rail workers. But the good news is you get to keep that marker. Why? You immediately score three points in addition to your normal scoring. Everything else is the exact same. Any questions? No. That's nope. how we play basic tramways on the moon and on Mars which kind of flows really nicely to tomorrow's On Mars live stream. So that's it. Let's go ahead and get to it. We need to reset the board. Tyrese is asking about the, if you have multiple threes, can you use any one you want? Yes. We actually ran into this a couple of times. So for instance, if, uh, da, 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 let me try and figure out an example. Let's say I had upgraded this previously because when you upgrade it's one link right so i had upgraded that link if i choose to move this passenger off of three i could go there or i could also come and deliver him to the industrial one and a half rounded up is two i would get three dollars for traveling on that everything else is normal and it works as as done previously does that make sense does that answer any questions yep all right anything else